guys, it is a hot, sticky summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm where it is hotter in New York, baby, than it is in Florida today. I, mean, I guess the whole state is under a heat advisory here on Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. So guys, you know, I keep trying to... Uh, get together my uh, hopium roundup rant and uh, good lord I just I just don't have the heart for it I uh, was at this music festival last night and I was gonna make this my rant uh, last night so what it was was an advertisement for some kind of private charter school and what they were advertising is that they were teaching children, you know, in the, I guess in the Ithaca, New York area, sustainability lessons. So they had 17 sustainability sort of classes or whatever. It was a little unclear, uh, but the UN Sustainable Development Goals was somehow sponsoring this. And there were 17 on the list. Number five most important thing for children to learn about sustainability was gender equality. Coming in at number eight was more economic growth to uh, achieve sustainability on the planet. Coming in at number nine we had more industry and infrastructure running neck and neck with more economic growth to uh, create a sustainable future for today's children. So let's see, coming in out of 17 at number 14 was life underwater. Life underwater, and coming in at 15 out of 17 was life on land. Life on land coming in at number 15 after gender equality coming in at number five and more economic growth, more industry, more infrastructure. So anyway, I just decided this morning to ignore a pilot project in the North Sea will develop floating solar panels that glide over waves like a carpet. That's all we need to say there. And so, but of course, next to that was we had some many versions of this story. And I went with Fox News. Good old Fox News. <clears throat> it has finally happened. Wow, who would have ever believed it? The endangered Migratory monarch butterflies are fluttering near extinction. Here is why. So it has finally happened. The migratory monarch butterfly is now officially an endangered species. Uh, the butterfly was declared endangered on Thursday by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The IUCN entered the species on its red list of threatened species, which now includes 147,517 species. And what I've never been clear about that number every year, when, when one is officially declared extinct, does it stay on the list of threatened or do they take it off the list that the list becomes smaller when uh, one actually goes extinct? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Gee, the monarch butterfly is being threatened by habitat destruction and climate change. Uh, The species population, you know, depending on what year they take these counts, has deteriorated between 22% and 72% over the 
over the last decade, over the last 10 years, uh, as deforestation for agricultural and urban development has destroyed their essential winter shelter in Mexico and California, pesticides and herbicides used in agriculture kill milkweed, severe weather in general, uh, has killed millions of butterflies. So then, of course, you know, last year, uh, you remember all of these rosy reports about how the monarch butterfly count was up last year, you know, for 2021. Compared to 2020, there were a lot more monarch butterflies in 2021. So I guess like last year, it was down 22%, the year before down 72%. But if you take the long range forecast for the Western, at least, the Western population of migratory monarch butterflies has the greatest risk of going extinct with an estimated 99.9% decline since the 1980s. So in the last 40 years, 99.99% of the Western monarchs, and of course here in New York or with the Eastern monarchs, I have about 300 milkweed plants here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I see no evidence of one monarch this year. Last year, we, we had a good crop of monarchs. I, I have not found Sandy. Have you found, I, was, I, I looked at Sandy's. Uh, I did not see one monarch caterpillar on hers. I do not have a single, uh, at least when I was up there about 10 days ago, no sign of the Eastern monarch on my very healthy milkweed patch. So that's what's going on with the monarchs. And here in this story, the monarch butterfly and the long-tailed macaque added to these. So uh, we've heard about the monarchs. They're getting all the attention, but the long-tailed macaque uh, is also making the list. Uh, conservationists say the news is a wake-up call for humanity. Yes, over the climate crisis, deforestation, agriculture, and development, and the wildlife trade. Uh, so they added another, it was 5,042 species uh, were added. Uh, two days ago, bringing the total uh, to 147,517. Uh, and of those, 41,000, so the ones classified, you know, at being, at, you know, ready to be obliterate, obliterated off the planet, out of that 147, 41,459 are, uh, you know, making the, the red, what they call the red list. And uh, so let's look at the long-tailed macaque. Has been upgraded from vulnerable to endangered. Welcome to the red list. Is hunting and trapping as well as the usual habitat destruction drive populations down. Hunting is now, quote, happening at unprecedented levels, the IUCN says, as persecution from human macaque conflict increases. The primate is hunted for food, you know, for the stew pot, but also, according to the report, quote, most ominously to fuel both the legitimate and illicit trade for research and other usages, close quote, uh, both prices and demand for the monkeys skyrocketed alarmingly during the corona panic. Uh, you know, these are the, the main uh, monkeys they use for research. 
you, you know, the V word and all of this other stuff is the long-tailed macaque. And obviously, uh, the corona panic uh, was pretty, is what, the corona panic is what finally drove the long-tailed macaque onto the, uh, onto the red list. Uh, native to Southeast Asia, the monkeys are sold for research and testing as pets and for human consumption. And, and how about this one? Uh, they are, let's see, they are killed by people who consider them a nuisance and are sold to replenish breeding farms that supply medical laboratories in the U.S. and Europe. And uh, how about this one? Many are sent into the pet and entertainment trade, including for filming abuse of baby macaques for social media posts. There you go. Uh, and they actually link you over to a story, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok earning millions from horrific animal cruelty videos. So I guess there's some YouTubers out there uh, who are abusing baby monkeys for clickbait. They have a picture on here probably from Southeast Asia from a YouTube video where they're putting a python on a little dog who looks kind of like Sancho Panza so you can watch the python uh, kill and eat cute that this is their cute dog videos it's unclear this dude in the back what is I, don't, I can't even tell what he's holding in his hand uh, my guess is that's from Southeast Asia the video the YouTube video of the uh, the cute little dogs being killed and eaten by pythons for our entertainment here on YouTube. I guarantee you that uh, that video received more hits and probably thumbs up than uh, Collapse Chronicles has received in its entire life. Okay, from there, let's zero in on China. Ironically enough, the name of this website is Next Shark. All right, they're going over to China where the iconic Chinese paddlefish and the wild Yangtze sturgeon officially declared extinct. You can kiss goodbye these two giant fish. <clears throat> The IUCN has officially verified that the Chinese paddlefish and the wild Yangtze sturgeon are now extinct on their list of, I guess, formerly threatened species. The Chinese paddlefish was, was one of the largest freshwater, freshwater fish in the world, weighing up to 660 pounds and measuring up to 10 feet in length. These fish were endemic to the freshwater wetlands in the Yangtze and Yellow River basins. They migrated upstream to their estuary in the East China Sea to spawn during mid-March or early April. Uh, the, the fish has been protected since 1989, but because the iconic fish species was economically valued for their rarity. They were fished for human consumption. And I've heard about this, uh, and this isn't only true for China. You better believe it is true for China, but this is true for anywhere where there's like this whole subculture of these rich people 
uh, trying to outbid each other, you know, to get their hands on the most critically endangered uh, wild animals on the planet to eat because they all want the honor that I was the last human being on this planet to eat the last known specimen of this animal. And uh, this is one of the reasons that the paddlefish has not been seen since 2003, I guess. The last one was eaten by some clueless billionaire. Uh, there you go. Uh, and in addition, 100% of the world's remaining 26 sturgeon species are now at risk of, ext of extinction. Their decline is steeper than previously thought, but of course the Yangtze sturgeon, uh, which was listed as critically endangered three years ago, has now been officially relisted as extinct. There you go. Uh, uh, both the Chinese paddlefish and the Yangtze sturgeon's population declines have been from human impact and environmental degradation, which is another term for human impact such as overfishing and overharvesting. I'm not sure what the difference between, oh, they probably mean overharvesting of caviar, I'm guessing. Habitat fragmentation, deforestation, mining, water pollution, and of course hydroelectric dams. The construction of the Gazuba Dam and the final uh, death knell the Three Gorges Dam blocked the anadromous migration of the Chinese pad paddlefish, so they couldn't go back and forth because of that. And that was also that freshwater dolphin. I remember when they were filling the Three Gorges Dam, uh, when I was just coming down this rabbit hole, one of the first things I was reading was an actual transcript where the uh, builders of the Three Gorges Dam, an actual video transcript of these planet eaters, fully admitting that they 100% they understood that building the Three Gorges Dam was going to send this dolphin, this freshwater dolphin species, what would kill it, would, would obliterate it off the face of the planet, and along with them, you know, the paddlefish and the sturgeon and all, and whatever. And they just, uh, you know, said, well, you know, collateral damage, sorry. Uh, with, with full knowledge what they were doing, they uh, went ahead with the Three Gorges Dam, which uh, that, that one, good God, the Three Gorges Dam, don't even get me going, is responsible for how many extinct species. But uh, that was the IUCN's Red List 2022 report. We're going to go down to Australia for a, the, the latest dire report, which is, uh, I guess, the Australian government's long-awaited 2021 State of the Environment Report. Finally getting here, mid-July of 2022, we have this report out of Australia titled, Australia Lost the Most Mammal Species in the World, Shocking Report Reveals. More mammal species in Australia than in Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, or Asia. So the honkies do not get a pass. 
And they ask anyone thinking honkies are saving the planet. <clears throat> Australia has lost more mammal species than any other continent in the world, and more are now headed towards extinction in the coming years due to a combined effect of habitat loss, invasive species, namely the humans, pollution, mining, and climate change, the shocking state of the environment report has warned. Yes, okay, this is a, the Australian government's five year, yearly environmental report card uh, was finally released after a year-long wait and it paints a grim picture of the country's unique biodiversity, which has been destroyed at an unprecedented rate over the last few years. Yes, more than 100 Australian species, including eight species of wallabies, alone like wallabies are like a small kangaroo, eight of them are going uh, down the tubes, have been, oh, more than 100 Australian species have already been declared extinct or at least extinct in the wild, meaning functionally extinct. Uh, so they're gone and 202 animal and plant species have now been declared threatened. Australia, which has some of the world's richest biodiversity zones, has one of the worst rates of species decline among the world's richest countries. So this is what's going on, you know, in one of the world's richest countries. The single biggest annihilation of our fellow earthlings going on in one of the world's richest countries run by honkies. How about the blue-tailed skink? Kiss it goodbye. The central rock rat. Uh, the Christmas Island flying fox are all expected to join the list soon, largely due to introduced predator species. Looking at plants, the sandalwood tree is also in decline as Australia has lost 6 million hectares. That is 15 million acres of primary forest since 1990. Uh, the number of species added to the list of threatened or higher category of threat now stands at 1,918, growing 8% from the last report in 2016. Uh, and don't forget the coral reefs. Uh, this is Environment Minister Tanya Pilbersek, I guess, grading her own performance. Quote, the State of the Environment Report is a shocking document. It tells a story of crisis and decline in Australia's environment in a decade of government inaction and willful ig ignorance. Yes, the report was supposed to be released last year but was delayed by the Scott Morrison government. Ms. Pilbersek said her administration, by contrast, would make the environment a priority. I won't be putting my head in the sand. Yes. Most of Australia's species have gone extinct or face extinction due to a combined impact of rapid habitat loss for mining and other human activities. An increased number of invasive species and of course climate change related extreme weather events. Anyway, 
All right. The report quoted the World Economic Forum. Oh, yes. You cannot have a story about the collapse of a planet without uh, bringing up the World Economic Forum. Is The report quoted the World Economic Forum in finding that environmental degradation, you know, spurred on by the World Economic Forum, you know, that environmental degradation was now considered a threat to humanity that could, quote, bring about societal collapse with long-lasting and severe consequences. Yes, and take a wild guess. How many comments on a planet of 8 billion people did uh, Australia lost the most mammal species in the world? Shocking report reveals. How many comments on a planet of 8 billion people? This is a no-brainer. If your vote was zero comments uh, on a planet of 8 billion clueless morons, give yourself a gold star. But uh, anyway, so I guess that was my Hopium Roundup rant. That was a fine Hopium Roundup rant. But don't worry. What is it? We have life on land as number as number 15 of 17 sustainability lessons we're teaching our youngsters. And do not forget the pilot project in the North Sea will develop floating solar panels that glide over waves like a carpet. I highly suggest you get over there and float over some waves like a carpet while you still can. Anyway, little dog, what are we going to do on this sweltering day? I'm going to go sleep in the shade. My guys.